Billy, please let me do that. No, no, you already have one accident. That's enough. I want you to have an accident, though. I'll hold the ladder steady and I'll be just fine, okay? But your leg. My leg is fine. Hold it was just being an alarmist, okay? Are you all right? Yeah, uh, I'm fine. Just answer the door. Hey, Happy New Year! Year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Thank you. Hi, Hi. Thank you. Oh, oh, this place Hi, looks Lily. wonderful. Yeah, very we festive. We thought we would do a little reverse volunteering here since you guys have been so great. No, we really have everything home. basically under control. Oh, what? come on. Couldn't I make some hors d'oeuvres no, or something? No, Fiona's in charge you of the cooking. The oh, well, where is she? In the kitchen? No, she's shopping. How's oh. John getting along with Fiona anyway? John's doing great. He's really getting along with everybody lately. Really? really? Yeah. Must be love. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Oh, it looks festive. great. It looks great. Terrific. Oh, thank you. Here's Fiona. 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 <laughs> we were just yeah. talking about you. Hello. 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 I don't know how you do it. Do what? Because, like, I give you 20 bucks, you come back with all this stuff. Well, it's all a matter of knowing how to shop, right? Right. Um, listen, can I help? <laughs> with no, no, way? darling. Dusty and Lily are all the help I need. Yes, come on. Come on. Gosh, looks like we're free to go, I guess. I'll tell you what, why don't we go back to the apartment? I could stand a little time alone with you. Mm, that's what you kept saying last night. I'm sorry the interview with Barbara lasted so long, but at least she's trying to break the ice and be friends with us. So she keeps saying. Meaning? Meaning. It's quite a cozy little scene I walked in on last night. Barbara and her sexy pajamas, you with your hair all tousled and lipstick on your collar is enough to make any woman jealous, which hmm. I'm sure is exactly what she intended to do. I didn't know you were the suspicious type. Well, even if I were jealous, she would be the last person to know. Now let's go home. Okay. It's awfully nice of you to let Paul camp out here while I'm in New York. Oh, don't be just silly. We're delighted to have him. Besides, you're doing your part by having Andy spend the night tonight. Which reminds me, I should go see if he's ready. Okay. Be right back. What are you doing tonight, Lisa? Oh, I'm having uh, dinner with Tom and Margot. And then I'm going to go to four parties. Can you believe that? But, you know, when you accept one invitation, then you have to accept all of them. Well, if you can squeeze this in, you're always invited to stop by here, you know. <laughs> Thank you, I... Well, I'll try. <laughs> um, Kim certainly does seem in wonderful spirit. I think it's getting all of those mysterious cards and packages out of the house. Uh, I don't understand that. <laughs> well, we gave all that stuff to the police. Uh, there's a new detective on the case. Maybe he can make some sense of all of this. Have they seen that man that Lisa spotted outside the house? No, they have an unmarked patrol car going around the neighborhood, but so far he hasn't turned up. Hi there. <laughs> Hi there yourself, stranger. Mm, I'm sorry I didn't call you, but I have been so tied up here. That's all right, I understand. Yeah, I've been following... How's it look for tonight, huh? Oh, 50-50. 50-50. I'm following an old lead of Roy's that, that's suddenly gotten hot. Well, it's gotten lukewarm, I should Ooh, say. Anything to do with Kevin? Uh-oh, you know I can't answer that. But I can tell you one thing. Kevin and Jay are both prime suspects in the eyes of my cohorts. I see. Mm -hmm. Look, why don't you go... And have dinner with Lisa without me, and then I'll meet you later at John. it's New Year's. I want to spend it with you. I know. I won't stand you up. I promise you. I'll try my best. All right. Okay. All this hard work's going to pay off once you get that promotion. If I get that promotion, I have a feeling a lot of it rests on this investigation. With you in the case, it's as good as solved. Did I ever tell you how crazy I am about you? Yes, tell me again. I'm crazy about you. I'm so glad. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. No sweat. We were just finishing. I was just leaving. <laughs> I will see you later. I'll do my best. Later. Okay. How are you doing, Rick? Oh, okay. Yeah, thank you. Sorry. Bye. Did Detective Johnson call back yet? No. No, I wouldn't hold my breath on that if I were you. <laughs> You're not too crazy about my Marsha Talbot theory, are you? Well, I'll tell you the truth. No. Like McCloskey said, it was my theory for a while. But I believe whoever murdered Cal Randolph and Marie Kovac attacked Marsha Talbot. Do me a favor, will you? Mm. Tell me everything that happened that night before I got there. Okay. Uh, she says she was on her way to the bank 
And uh, she was attacked by some guy in a ski mask. Mm -hmm. And then uh, she felt something tightening around her neck and she blacked out. I, I could see that she was um, still kind of shaky, so I didn't ask her any more questions. And then uh, Franny got her coat and uh, Doug put it on and, well, then, then they, they left. That was it. Uh, that's about all. Wait a minute. Where was her coat? In the closet, I guess. In the closet? Boy, it was 15 degrees out that night. If Marcia Talbot was on her way to the bank before she got attacked, then why wasn't she wearing her coat already? <laughs>